The Korowai live on the Indonesian side of New Guinea Island. They are neighbors of the Kambai and Sitak Asmat. They share some traits with these groups, but as with most groups in New Guinea, are also unique in their language and culture. The Korowai live in treehouse structures that allow them protection from raiders. These raiders could be other Korowai or nearby Kambai who attack in order to capture wives. They also protected them from raids from the nearby Sitak Asmat headhunters. Sitak Asmat no longer practice headhunting, but the Korowai still build and use tree houses if they live outside the Indonesian created villages. The walls of the tree house are built from a combination of bark from two kinds of trees. This design uses a layering of the bark that stops arrows from penetrating the walls of the tree house. We were introduced to a Korowai man named Oni, who still lives in a tree house. Some of the Korowai have moved to villages such as Mabul and live in Indonesian style houses. Oni still lives with his extended family, hunting and fishing for food, and living like the Korowai have lived since before the missionaries and government officials arrived. The shields are carved from the flying buttress roots of mangrove trees that grow in the New Guinea jungle. The roots form this way because it allows the tree to trap rainwater in an environment with little topsoil. Oni starts by selecting a tree on his family's lands with a large enough root to be used for a shield. Then using an axe he removes the wood which will be used for the shield. Oni brought his young nephew Andri along. Oni has no children of his own. Andre gets bored easily. Though the Korowai have some contact with the outside world, they have little access to metal tools. We wanted to record the making of a Korowai shield with traditional tools, a stone axe and bone chisel. Excess wood is removed from the section of root so that it will be lighter and easier to carry. Then Oni carries it to a place closer to his home to work on the carving of the shield. We film the shield carving over multiple days. Oni is joined by a relative named Dare, who helps with the rest of the shield making. Dare is Oni's mother's brother. The length of time needed to produce a shield varies. Usually the carver will do most of the carving early on while the wood is still wet. As the moisture evaporates, the wood cures and becomes harder. The carving process is much easier before the wood dries. Unfortunately, we had to limit Oni's carving time to a daylight schedule so we could film the carving. This meant he could not work on the shield at night when he could have used a fire for light. Measurements for proportion and symmetry are made by hand. Neither man appeared to be in charge of the carving, though both men knew what to do. There was little communication about the process between them. While carving, the bone chisel Oni was using broke. Oh. 
We gave him a metal chisel since he had no other chisel to work with. He had used metal tools in the past but did not own any. He liked the chisel since it didn't need sharpening and was easier to use. As part of the payment for carving this shield, we also gave him a steel axe head. The area that the coral Y live in receives much in the way of rain. Occasionally we would have to stop filming due to the rain. During such rain delays, Oni would stop working on the shield as well, so that we might not miss any of the details of how he carved the shield. The final step is to paint the shield. The red and white is made by mixing clay found on the river bank with water. The black is made from charcoal mixed with water. The designs that were carved into the shield stand out in great relief due to the addition of these colors. The design of the shield reflects iconic symbols that the Korowai find in nature, such as whirlpools and boar tusks. Korowai shields are called waluman. A shield is held by one man, who creates a defense against possible arrows, while a bowman stays behind it with the shield bearer. The bowman will use the shield bearer to get closer to his target and then fire their own arrows at the target. This form of teamwork is the core of Korowai military method. For the Korowai, a shield is more than an object used to protect oneself during conflict. It is also a part of their culture and a medium that contains ideas about the world and how the Korowai experience life.